they get up on a stage in front of um, a big Atlas audience and they give their elevator pitch. Um, some do this in their non-native language, uh, but it's always inspiring to hear them try to summarize the value in less than a minute of you know, their work and uh, and Peter's work was particularly particularly moving and um, and I think it's kind of appropriate you know to share it with you because we're we're in Hong Kong we see how important the Lion Rock Institute is in advancing our ideas locally and um, and also the, the elevator pitches uh, have a, a real important role in Atlas's programs we're going to be doing um, that again at the Atlas Liberty Forum that I was plugging earlier in in November. And uh, just following the elevator pitches, we're going to do our tribute to John Blundell. And it's been mentioned to me that while we made passing reference at our plans to do a big tribute to John in November, that maybe we should take a moment to, to remember him here, because John uh, was so important to uh, the movement and to Atlas. Um, you know, for those who don't know, you know, John, most of us knew for running the uh, Institute of Economic Affairs for the better part of two decades. I think it was 1992 to 2009. Uh, he was an Atlas board member throughout that period, and indeed before he uh, he went back to the UK to uh, to run the IEA, the sort of granddaddy think tank to the Atlas Network. Uh, he headed up simultaneously Atlas and the Institute for Humane Studies. And I think about you know, what those organizations are dedicated to, you know, Atlas is all about developing the next generation of think tank entrepreneurs who are going to play a role in strengthening the, the case for freedom. And IHS, of course, uh, is all about being the catalyst to a rising generation of academics <coughs> who will fuel our movement with new ideas. So you know, John was at the center of both of those and uh, in all that he did, including the, the history that he would uh, be writing in his, in his last years, he was always focused on uh, on the principles that are going to prevail over time, and the kind of leadership that advances them. And he was a, last time that we saw him um, it was November, and he was giving a toast to Margaret Thatcher. He famously wrote um, uh, a biography of um, of Lady Thatcher, and uh, and that was sort of you know, one part of it. But most of John's writing concentrated on the people behind the scenes that weren't necessarily uh, in the limelight, but we're affecting change through people like this, um, as, as members of a society that are dedicated to the long-term battle outside of uh, the direct political fray. Um, and John, um, like no other, I think, chronicled our movement and was behind the scenes trying to see how he could push us in a good direction. Um, he ran the 2002 Mount Pelerin Society meeting and has been actively involved as um, uh, Alex and, and I have been uh, working with others on the uh, plans for 2016. So, the John we missed, and I was thinking for a moment that we should be doing a, a moment of silence, but that's not like John. You know, there's no know he's there for the, uh, the Maggie Thatcher toast, and she'd be so disappointed that this is full of water. But I thought maybe we should just do a little here, here to John uh, with a promise to celebrate him again in November. Here, here, here. And of course, um, one of John's favorite things about the Liberty Forum was the uh, the parade of elevator pitches that let us show off the people that are, are coming up through Atlas programs, um, hopefully uh, getting some benefit out of them and going back into their own countries to advance the ideas that we care so much about. And as I said, one of the most memorable ones that I heard was Peter Wong from Lion Rock Institute. So, welcome, Peter. Uh, it's been a while. Last time uh, I was at, uh, in uh, Washington D.C. Uh, at uh, Atlas uh, MBA program, so I think uh, uh, Brad might 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 have forgotten. Uh, it was not a elevator speech unless uh, we are going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but uh, um, I talked to uh, um, Stephanie. And uh, he thought, so at first, I'm a firm believer of uh, division of labor. So, uh, you know, I like things, you know, put things together behind the scene and let others to come up, you know, who, who can speak much more beautiful than I do. I'm not, you know, I'm not an impressive, I don't think I'm an impressive speaker, but, uh, but you know, 
But uh, uh, Stephanie keeps uh, encouraging me, and you should share your own story. You should share your father's story. And, uh, and after second thought, I think I should. I should. Uh, in 2010, uh, my father, uh, he was still here. Uh, he suffered uh, from dementia at that time, but uh, in 2012, he passed away. But uh, I think uh, I should really take this opportunity to honor him uh, because I think his story will give uh, an encouragement to every one of us here. Uh, well, to begin with, uh, I would like to start with uh, the uh, definition uh, of, uh, you know, some people come to me and ask why your institute called this called the Lion Rock Institute. Of course, uh, we have uh, official definition, uh, you can find it from our website. Uh, but uh, one definition or one explanation that other, uh, my, our founders and directors may not know, I, my group and personal definition is that, um, well, the Lion Rock oh, it is a mountain lies between, oh, if you know about the geographies of Hong Kong, so the northern part is the new territories and the south so to speak, the downtown, whatever you call it. So it's the southern bound of Lime Rock. And before the 80s, uh, we had an immigration policy called the touch base policy. So I guess the audience are you know, familiar with uh, baseball. So if you pass a line, uh, you get into, like, I mean, the, the uh, refugees from China, if they want to come to Hong Kong, they have to pass the line, well, they have to get to, to downtown to get their permanent residency here in Hong Kong. And that line is actually Lime Rock. Lime Rock lies between the downtown and the new territories. <coughs> so my father in the 60s, um, uh, he was a refugee. I, I didn't realize that, you know, when I was, you know, when I grew up, um, you know, I, I knew that my father, he came from China. But he, did, he never mentioned to me he was a refugee until quite you know, 10 years ago. I finally discovered, yes, he was a refugee. And, um, and, um, uh, and, and he, to be honest, his situation at that time in China was not the tourist one, because at that time he lived in the city. So in the cities, you, don't, you didn't suffer from famines, that much. He, he still get some, he, he, he managed to get some support from our relative in Hong Kong. So, I mean, he is not, he was not in hunger that uh, he must leave the country. But, but one thing that he really disliked the regime at that time, he, it's very natural. He was, he, he, he told me, um, you know, I can't, I couldn't accept the notion that uh, under communism, Everyone must be equal. Well, of course, we know everyone. You know, there are someone more equal than most of the people. But uh, you know, he, he just in at school, he, he just can't couldn't accept the fact that you know every student must look the same. And so again, in when he was turning twenty, he decided um, to uh, you know. Uh, to become an illegal immigrant to Hong Kong, and he tried seven times. Um, uh, well, there are funny stories. Uh, you know, at the end of his life, um, he suffered from dementia, so he couldn't control himself and yell all the time. I, and I finally, that might be the survival skill that uh, he acquired when he was young, when he tried to smuggle um, uh, my way to Hong Kong because uh, he told me one time we, we, when he uh, jumped into the water, swam, or of course not swam all the way from China to Hong Kong, but uh, you have to swim to, you know, the water deep enough, then you get on board uh, of a boat, and then, you know, you, you go, you know, some way more close to Hong Kong, and then you jump into the water again, you swim. But, um, uh, when the time he jumped into the water, all of a sudden uh, a, a few uh, PLA army appeared 
And at that time, they would literally, they would shoot for those who tried to leave the country. And uh, because the boat um, saw the, uh, the, the PLA army coming, so they didn't try to wait for my father and they, you know, they depart uh, immediately. And my father was stuck in the situation that, uh, okay, either you return to the shore and then you will be caught by the PLA army, or you expect you can swim faster than the boat, but that, that was not possible, right? So he kept yelling, yelling, yelling. And then all of a sudden it worked, and the boat has to, had to uh, come back and pick him up. And the, 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 uh, the smuggler, the, the human smuggler, uh, asked him, how could you scream? Because uh, if you scream, then the, the PLA army will shoot us. And he said, that is my point. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come back and pick me up. So uh, anyway, so, so uh, now that, you know, in this time, we, 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 we felt, uh, you know, we feel this is funny, but, uh, you know, it's, it was really a life death situation at that time. Um, so to make the uh, long story short, um, a few days ago, um, I was um, I was uh, at the DPT fund, um, in which uh, I met uh, lots of uh, uh, scholars from China. Some of them participated um, in the uh, uh, 1989 uh, Tiananmen incident. Um, also, many of them, they when they grew up. During their teenage, uh, they some of them were the, the red guards, and and some of uh, some of them uh, were a lady that I met. Uh, she told me actually I was not uh, permitted to join the red guards because of my impure DNA. Uh, well, because you know I met with two scholars at that time. One was the red card at the time, and one was not permitted to be the red card. And I asked uh, uh, the, the one who, were, who, who was the red card, uh, he told me that, oh, uh, you know, at that time I really believed in common stuff. Um, and then I asked, uh, when did you start, you know, wake up? And he said, oh, maybe in the 1970s, uh, you know, when the game of war, uh, you know, had a power struggle with uh, another general at that time. But he said, you know, throughout his teenage, from young, uh, from, child, from his childhood to his teenage, um, he firmly believed in atonement, uh, whereas uh, the other who was not um, permitted to be the red guard, um, she said that, uh, I don't know why, I just, I just you know, I just can't accept the notion that everyone has to be equal. So, you know, my conclusion I'm trying to make is now I'm still involved in this, uh, you know, the liberty movement, even, you know, Hong Kong is enjoying the prosperity. And one point I want to make is we have to still work hard to defend it, otherwise, you would lose it. And also, I think I'm still engaged with the movement is because of the DNA. In my blood, maybe my yeah. Of course, it's my father who passed along the DNA to me that uh, I have no choice but to continue to fight for freedom. And I believe, I believe, many of us here, um, and I do not think you guys have choice. But you know, something just intrinsically inside you just propel you to work, no matter. You know the consequences. I, you know, sometimes I doubt. You know, people we just mentioned uh, uh, John Bundell. I just wonder. You know, in the sixty, when basically most of the things in the UK is falling apart, but how can he persist to contribute at uh, IBA? How can they survive when you know the the Labour government was in power, and even the Conservative government, 
I was in power, but they keep u turn all the time. I wonder how he could survive at that time. But at the end, you know, he, you know the victory that uh, he, he he gained at the end. So oh, my point, uh, what I'm trying to say is, you know, you know, we all have up and downs, but uh, we just keep, you know, don't try to uh, stop, you know. Force from within us, you know, the DNA, the spirit that drive me, drive us work. We have to keep going, and also the most important is we, as the virus, inject our DNA into other people who don't have the DNA to make this world a more prosperous place to live. Thank you.